Welcome to today's second most important telecast. I'm Gilbert E. Jones, General Manager of IBM's Data Processing Division. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this most unusual occasion. This private telecast is reaching over 100 meetings across the nation, and it is also being carried to our good neighbor, Canada. Electronic data processing as a field is relatively new, just over 10 years old. It's come far in this last decade. We have seen many new companies come into the computer industry, bringing that extra in incentive that strong and intelligent competition always creates. The October issue of Fortune magazine highlights some of this activity. All of us in the computer field are still in that buoyant stage of development where the pace of new discoveries, new advances, and new equipment comes in a steady stream from our laboratories. The purpose of this meeting is to demonstrate a number of new IBM products and to, and to discuss their application to your business problems. Our theme today is balanced data processing, balanced in terms of product and service. Balanced data processing means the synchronization of input, processing, and output units for optimum production. It means the balancing of machine installations with superior service. It means measuring the value of data processing in terms of net results rather than the speed of an individual unit. One of the natural expressions of IBM's concept of balanced data processing is the geographic structure of our company. Wherever you are, we are. 200 IBM branch offices and 33 IBM Federal Systems offices located in every major industrial community. These offices are staffed with over 10,000 specialists, sales analysts, customer engineers, sales representatives, all of whom are constantly bringing you our equipment, services, and supplies. Balancing this IBM service at the local level are national facilities serving the entire country. Three regional offices in New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles, manufacturing plants and laboratories in Poughkeepsie, Endicott, Yorktown Heights, Burlington, Vermont, Rochester, Minnesota, and San Jose, California. Supply installations at Concord, Massachusetts, Dayton, New Jersey, Washington, D.C., Greencastle, Indiana, and Sherman, Texas, and military products installations at Kingston and Owego, New York. And from one end of the country to the other are 22 IBM educational centers. Fortunately, IBM's 23,000 customers are also balanced geographically. We are extremely proud of the relationship we have had with these customers over the last 44 years. Our product development people depend to a large measure on a knowledge of customer needs developed by you in the field. Actually, product development's most difficult job is not the creation of a new equipment. This is usually a technical problem, hence solvable. Much more challenging is the problem of bringing the new equipment in at a realistic price. Price must equal function, or the equipment will find no market. Today, we want to show you just such a breakthrough a major IBM product development that will mean much more value for your data processing dollar. For this, we go to Endicott, New York, and Dan Hilliard. For data processing that requires speed, for data processing that requires power, for data processing that requires job economy, IBM brings you a new concept in general purpose accounting the all-new IBM 1401 data processing system. It's fast, it's powerful, it's compact, it's versatile. And it gives you much more value for your data processing dollar. Never before has so much powerful processing ability been built into such a low-cost system. The IBM 1401 system is comprised of these three units, 
the 1401 processing unit, which houses the arithmetical, logical, and input-output functions and controls the entire system through stored programming. The 1402 card read punch, which utilizes proven components of other IBM machines and delivers the fastest combined card input and output in IBM history. The 1403 printer, a new milestone in high-speed printing with increased document throughput, the true measure of printing production. This is the 1401, a complete data processing system with all the advantages of stored programming balanced with high-speed input and output. The IBM 1401 processing unit is a completely solid-state machine with 1,400 positions of core storage. This may be increased to 2,000 or 4,000 positions. The 1401 system is completely alphameric. It accepts both letters and numbers. Its variable link data and instructions permit full use of core storage positions. Its add to storage capabilities make separate locations for accumulators unnecessary, so storage requirements are reduced to a minimum. Numbers and sizes of totals are restricted only by the number of available storage positions. In addition, the 1401 features a unique print editing ability. It presents a completely edited line to the printer inserting dollar signs, decimal points, commas, asterisks, and other signs in their proper place. The console has a logical and directly readable display panel, a tremendous aid to programmers. Under stored programs, the processing unit controls the IBM 1402 card read punch, which can read cards at the rate of 800 per minute and punch them at the rate of 250 per minute. The 1402 has five 1,000 card capacity, non-stop unloading radio stackers. With these five stackers, many following start to separate operations are eliminated. The IBM 1403 printer is a completely new development a totally new concept in high-speed printing. Watch it go. The most important feature of the 1403 for printing output is a new dual-speed carriage which can advance paper at the rate of either 33 or 75 inches per second. Normally, in printing reports, more than half the paper passes through the printer blank, unprinted. The 1403 prints at the rate of 600 lines a minute. But because of its new high-speed carriage, the blank paper between lines is pushed through far in excess of printing speed, much in the same manner that an elevator whisked by floors where it doesn't have to stop. Actually, in high gear, the 1403 can move paper at the rate of 75 inches per second. This means that paper over 16 inches wide is moving at the speed of magnetic tape. This, then, is the new IBM 1401 data processing system. It will give you powerful data processing ability with great reliability of components, low power consumption, reduced air conditioning, and much smaller space requirements. As a card system, the 1401 processing unit comes in two models. This is model A, a single module with all the features and capabilities we've just described. IBM product development cognizant of market needs, has created in the 1401 a system designed to meet data processing requirements not just for giant corporations, but for all businesses. And what is more, the system's designed to grow as your business grows. That's the reason for the Model B. A double module which gives the user the option of adding specific features to the processing unit to fit the special needs of his system. As an example, 
Should a job require a lot of multiplication, the calculate option available to the Model B will execute multiply operations up to six times faster than in the basic system. But now, without any further discussion, let's see the Model B in action. We'll take a typical manufacturing control application. Inventory control producing a stock status report. Into the file feed of the read side of the 1402, we have placed cards. We could actually put in 3,000 IBM cards at one time. These cards represent old inventory balances, material requirements, receipts and issues, own order items and adjustments, sorted into part number sequence. The 1401 processing unit, utilizing a stored program, analyzes each card and determines what action must be taken. Add, subtract, multiply, divide, compare. It also instructs the card read punch to create new inventory balance cards and reorder cards. These cards are separately stacked for whatever action will be required. The cards read in will also be separated so that one stacker will contain available requirements cards. Another stacker will have missing requirements cards for action. The last stacker will contain the detailed transaction and old inventory balance cards. The 1401 processing unit also controls the 1403 printer. It is now printing out a complete stock status report. Let's look at the report the 1403 is printing. You can see how detailed and complete the information is. The 1401 card system combines the work formerly done by a combination of accounting machines, summary punch, and calculator. Because it performs these functions with greater speed and fewer operations, it means substantial savings in this vital accounting area. Certainly one of the greatest advantages of the IBM 1401 data processing system is that it affords punch card users the opportunity to add magnetic tape input and output with a minimum of reprogramming and conversion costs. And here to demonstrate this important feature of the 1401 is Bill Hodder. Thank you. The goal of product planning in developing the IBM 1401 data processing system was to provide our customers with equipment that could be custom tailored to their needs. One of the goals was to achieve machine flexibility that would balance data processing growth with business growth. Here we have it. For the unit record user whose volume is outgrowing the maximum card system, the 1401 provides the opportunity to convert some of this volume to tape. All the economy, versatility, and systems advantages of the punch card approach can be coupled with the speed, the additional input, and the storage compactness of magnetic tape. Up to six, 729 tape units can be added to the 1401 system to convert to the Model C, a complete card and tape system. You may choose any one of four different speeds. With the 729 Model 2 tape drive, you can get either 15,000 or 41,000 characters per second. With the 729 Model 4 tape drive, you can get either 22,500 or 62,500 characters per second. The character rate you choose is dependent upon your individual needs. The Model C is a complete, independent, balanced magnetic tape data processing system. Let's see it at work on an invoice writing job. On this magnetic tape unit, we have customers' names and addresses and such other information as class of trade discounts, product group discounts, standard shipping instructions, unit shipping charges, salesman's name, and his commission percentage. We also have the customer's credit rating, total outstanding accounts receivable. Punch cards representing the products ordered by the customers are fed into the read side of the IBM 1402 card read punch. 
The processing unit under stored program control reads the magnetic tape unit until it finds the proper customer name and address corresponding to the customer number in the product order card. This is read directly into storage as information for the printer and to control subsequent operations. The 1401 will then multiply quantity times price to arrive at the total amount for each item and apply the proper discount rate to develop the net amount to be billed for each item. These extended lines would then be written on magnetic tape for month-end sales analysis. For each invoice, a card is punched representing the salesman's commission. If any invoice exceeds the customer's credit limit, a separate card is punched with the necessary information and separately stacked for immediate action. The total of outstanding accounts receivable is updated for future control. The invoice being printed makes full use of the dual speed carriage of the 1403 printer. Let me repeat again that the 1401 Model C is a complete and independent data processing system in itself. However, it has even greater versatility. It can be used as a powerful adjunct to existing data processing systems, specifically the 700-7000 series. Here is Jim Beezer to demonstrate one of these uses. Thank you. For those of you who have the IBM 700 or 7000 series, our new 1403 printer offers a new concept in high-speed printing at low cost. The 1403, with its tremendous paper handling capabilities for spacing, skipping, and ejecting, its actual throughput power can handle complicated printing operations without tying up the time of the larger and more expensive equipment. I'd like to show you just how this efficiency can be accomplished in a typical payroll operation. The magnetic tape on this reel has been prepared by a 705 for the purpose of printing payroll checks and earnings statements. Here is a sample check. It is an IBM Continuous Farm punch card check on which it would be possible to print 21 lines of information. Actually, in this operation, we will only need an average of two lines of information. 19 lines will be left blank. Let's put the 1403 through its paces. Look at those checks go, 230 per minute. The dual speed carriage hurdles the blank spaces at a terrific rate. Without this feature, a line passing speed in excess of 4,800 lines per minute would be required to get this same production. 230 checks per minute. Here they are. The unique design of the 1403, the thing that makes this almost incredible performance possible, is a simplified chain mechanism developed by IBM. The 1403 prints in 132 positions using only five sets of 48 alphabetic, numeric, and special characters. The chain moves at 90 inches per second. Fixed in this horizontal plane, the chain mechanism assures perfect print lines. Engraved type assures a high quality print impression. Each character before it prints is checked electronically. The IBM 1403 printer was skillfully designed for operator E. It opens quickly for form setup and alignment. And to speed handling this new double duty stand can be used to bring new forms to the printer and to wheel completed ones away. Summing up then, 
The IBM 1403 printer can bring new efficiency and improved performance to your IBM 700 or 7000 series data processing system. And now back to Mr. Jones in New York. I'd like to thank all three of you gentlemen up in Endicott for a fine job of demonstrating IBM's new 1400 series. The product was jointly developed by domestic and World Trade Corporation engineers. Here is a new IBM data processing system truly geared for the intermediate price range. It is available, as is all of our equipment, through several methods of acquisition. Purchase, purchase option, installment purchase, or monthly rental. The 1401 is under the aegis of Mr. O.M. Scott, general manager of our general products division. He has some important information relating to the testing of this new equipment. So let's return to Endicott and Mr. Scott. Like the proverbial iceberg, only a small fraction of IBM service is visible to the customer's eyes. The great book is behind the scenes in our research laboratories and manufacturing plants. Product testing is just such a service. Reliable performance of IBM equipment in your office begins with product testing in our plants. Of course, our handling of equipment is a little different from yours, deliberately so. Your idea is to keep your equipment going. Our idea is to do everything humanly possible to break it down. To achieve this, we submit all new equipment to the most rigorous of testing techniques. We deliberately overload. We deliberately underload. We perform tricky operations repetitively to measure the consistency of performance. As an example, the new IBM 1401 system underwent testing procedures that covered many thousands of machine hours of actual operation. Every component and sub-assembly was exposed to usage far more rigorous than it would ever encounter in any business office. When, as and if, we found performance below our high standards, we took necessary corrective steps immediately. I want to show you two especially interesting testing facilities we have here at Indica. This is our anechoic chamber, dead quiet, insulated from all external sound. Here we are able to measure scientifically the pure sound level of our equipment. We have established specifications which each piece of equipment must meet. No machine goes to market before these specifications are attained. And this is our climatological cl chamber where machines are exposed to variations of temperature and humidity far beyond what will be found in the field. Performance is measured under these adverse conditions. Again, the equipment must meet the most rigid specifications before we release it for marketing purposes. What you have seen, of course, is only a fraction of the comprehensive testing procedures that every new IBM product undergoes. Now there is another area of testing equally important. This testing program is your assurance that an IBM product will perform satisfactorily when it gets to your office and that it will do the job for which it was designed. In our general products division, we have four plants employing over 12,000 people. Your confidence in IBM quality keeps the people in our plants fully occupied. Your ideas, as they come to us in a constant stream, create the climate of challenge that keeps us on our toes. And for this, we are most grateful and we sincerely hope responsive. Now back to Mr. Jones in New York. And now from Endicott, New York, from the east to the far west, we jump to IBM's newest plant in San Jose, California. Your guide there will be our director of marketing programs, 
Mr. Y.P. Dawkins. Good morning. Welcome to San Jose. Situated in the heart of the Santa Clara Valley, 60 miles south of San Francisco. This is IBM's West Coast Manufacturing, Research, and Product Development Center. We in IBM are proud of this modern, forward-looking facility, which services the entire western part of the United States. Here, 2,500 IBMers are employed. These four buildings comprise the Educational Center here at San Jose. Historically, education has always been a high priority item in IBM. Not only the education of our people to service you, but education of you, our customers. Data processing is in a state of dynamic growth. It is being remolded by technological developments in equipment and by the discovery of brand new application areas. This calls for an increased tempo and in communication between our customers and ourselves. More and more, the most fruitful experience in this line comes from our customer educational services. This service takes place not only in our branch offices, but in the 22 educational centers situated near the most important industrial communities in the country. 90,000 customers' people attended educational center sessions at these centers last year. Customer education is a two-way street. We learn, our customers learn. We learn of new computer applications that our customers, through experience and perception, have developed in the field. Our customers, in turn, learn how they can apply new configurations of IBM equipment to meet their ever-increasing demand for total information. Another most important phase of this service is the IBM Customer Executive Educational Program which is centered in our installations at Poughkeepsie, Endicott, and here at San Jose. This program has over 20 years of successful experience behind it. Last year alone, well over 6,500 corporate executives were enrolled. They spent over 33,000 class days attending special study sessions covering every aspect of data processing at the executive level. This year's attendance will be even higher. This program not only helps IBM customers' executives wake up, make the most best possible use of their present IBM equipment, but most important, it offers a unique opportunity to pool their ideas and experiences in the rapidly expanding applications of electronic data processing. San Jose, as I'm sure most of you know, is the home of the versatile RAMAC 305, the first IBM machines to offer true inline data processing. Data or information is available with the same random accessibility as with a conventional filing cabinet. The difference is electronic speeds. The RAM Act 305 processes transactions as they occur and updates related records in the same processing step. RAM Act's unique disk storage unit can store millions of business facts for management's needs. This complete new concept of business record keeping obviously fills a long existing need. Your acceptance to the RAM Act is exemplified by this plant, from which over 500 machines have been shipped. This product is presently at work speeding data processing in almost every area of government and industry. I want to tell you about a new special feature for this equipment, increased processing speed, IPS as we call it. It is an engineering development that can be installed in existing 305 processing units. It involves no special program addressing or control panel wiring. With input and output to the machine remaining constant, the speed with which data can be proce processed internally has been accelerated. In short, more work can be performed in the same amount of input-output time. Actually, in test runs, we have found that installations of IPS can reduce processing time by 20% without reprogramming or shifting of data. We anticipate even larger savings with program changes and rearrangement of data so that work can be accomplished more efficiently. In other words, with the new IPS feature, you can develop longer programs with more program checks and totals, giving you more input-output balance with processing on your IBM RAMAC. And now, back to Mr. Jones in New York. Thank you. For your information, one of Mr. Dawkins' major responsibilities 
is seeing that our customers are provided with complete systems installation services. This means more than the mere physical installation of IBM equipment. It means complete pre-installation planning. No matter where you are located, trained IBM specialists are available to perform this vital service. Sales representatives, systems analysts, special industry representatives, applied scientists, customer engineers, physical planning engineers, all are trained to help you solve your data processing problems. These men work with you to ensure a smooth installation. IBM also makes available its unmatched applied programming service. This group was responsible for our recently announced commercial translator, a new computer language. They offer pre-tested, pre-written, and pre-analyzed programs for each of our data processing systems. At the present time, we have 230 highly trained specialists, specialists preparing these programs. This service keeps pace with product development. For example, our applied programming people already have developed programs to support the 707. These include autocoder, input-output control system, sort and merge routine, report generator, and Fortran. This department has also developed programs for today's 1401, which include a symbolic programming language, a set of subroutines, an automatic check for accuracy. For a demonstration of the new 1401, performing peripheral operations with the 7070 in a brokerage application, we now go to Poughkeepsie and Joe Crevelin. Adaptability is a key feature of the new IBM 1401 data processing system. In the brokerage field, as an example, it can meet the requirements of all firms, regardless of size. The low-volume firm will use the basic equipment as an independent, integrated system. For them, the 1401 card system can compute 1,500 trades, print 1,500 confirmations, and punch 1,500 computed trade cards in 30 minutes. They will also be able to add margin accounting applications. A firm with 1,000 daily margin transactions 30,000 positions, and 8,000 positions to price daily can complete this margin accounting function in two hours. Larger brokerage firms with 700, 7,000 systems installed will use the 1401 system for peripheral operations such as tape editing for printing, tape auditing and checking, card to tape, tape to card, tape sorting and rearrangement. I'd like to demonstrate the abilities of the 1401 in a typical peripheral operation, converting trade cards to magnetic tape. Here's the procedure. The original entry is an IBM card containing all the information necessary to identify the trade to the computer. The card read punch reads information into the core storage. On the basis of a stored program, the information is checked for accuracy and any error condition is indicated by an exception card. The completed transaction record is written on tape by the 1401, thank you, and is now ready for further processing by the IBM 7070. This is the 7070 room, the 7070 console, the inquiry station, the 7500 card reader, the 7550 card punch, the 7400 printer. These units contain the stored program and perform the logical and arithmetical operations. The real of magnetic tape prepared on the 1401 has been placed on the 7070 tape drive. The 7070 is reading the magnetic tape for the transaction record. At the same time, it obtains the customer's name and address and any other special information required from the 7300 RAMAC files. 
the completed trade record, is now being written on a new tape by the 7070. While this process is being completed, I want to tell you about a new version of the 7070 computer. This new tape-oriented system is created by removing the card input and output, the online printer, and their associated controls. A new console card reader is added, which is used for loading additional program cards and exception cards at the rate of 60 per minute. This means improved operation and significantly reduced job costs, important savings that are made possible by utilizing the new 1401 for the input and output function. Thank you. We take the new tape, condensed as it is, to the 1401. No pre-editing is required. One tape reel will contain approximately 9,600 confirmations. The 1401 processing unit, under stored program instructions, selects the information for the lines to be printed on the form. This economic use of tape reduces tape processing time and cost. The printer is getting its instructions from the 1401. If a duplicate confirmation is required for certain customers, the printer can be instructed to repeat before reading the next tape record. The printed confirmation in complete form is now ready for mailing. This demonstrates but one approach to a single area in the brokerage application of the 1401. In addition, the 1401 can be used in a similar manner for balancing a stock record takeoff prior to updating the stock ledger. It can also be used in the bookkeeping area for pre-balancing and editing of ledger detail. The operations we have just seen performed were facilitated to a great degree by applied programming know-how in handling generalized routines. You have also seen how the 1401 can free valuable processing time on larger systems, a significant data processing economy. Now, back to Mr. Jones in New York. You have just had a look at the IBM 7070 in action. This machine will be in operation next March at the opening of our first data center in New York's financial district. IBM's data centers will make it possible for you, our customers, to rent computers by the hour. They will supply backup time equipment for peak loads and other emergencies, as well as providing facilities for customer education and program testing. A second data center is being opened in April in Chicago, and a third in Los Angeles in May. These will be followed by other centers across the country. Now to get back to the IBM 7070. This equipment is being manufactured at our Poughkeepsie plant. So let's return there to meet the general manager of IBM's data, of IBM's data system division, Mr. W.B. McWhorter. Thank you, Gil. When we think about our manufacturing operations, we understandably are proud of our plant and our equipment but we're especially proud of the IBM know-how, which is the special talent of our manufacturing people. Some of us occasionally forget the fact that a machine or system, no matter how powerful or sophisticated, is something designed and built by humans. And the human know-how is what determines the character and the quality of the machine or the system. We'd like you to see some of our people at work on the manufacturing line in our Poughkeepsie plant. Here you see 7070s and 7090s being assembled for final testing before being shipped to customers. As units are moved into this testing area, power is applied for the first time. Our technicians, using specially designed equipment, check out every circuit, every component. When the individual circuits and components have been checked, units are connected together to form subsystem groups and the efficiency of these combinations is checked with two or more units operating together. Also at this stage, recent engineering developments and improvements are incorporated in the machines or systems to bring them up to date in every respect. The subsystems groups are then connected to make up a complete system, and that complete system is tested by established diagnostic programs both component reliability and systems reliability are thoroughly tested. 
the system must meet all specifications for performance and reliability. When these specifications are met, each unit is given a final cleaning and the covers installed. Once again, the entire system is retested. If everything checks out again, if we know beyond doubt that every component individually and the system as a whole meet IBM's quality standards, then the finished and tested product is ready for shipment and installation. When the tested product reaches a customer's office, IBM's famous core of customer engineers, men who have participated in the final testing and assembling, take over. The training of our customer engineers prepares them for a vital customer service. Every man receives advanced engineering courses in education centers such as this one at Poughkeepsie. Let's take a look inside. My name is Frank Shoney. I'm a customer engineer out of the Cincinnati office. At present, I'm here at the Education Center studying the 7090 system. During my seven years with IBM, I've had training and experience on many machines. Among these were the 701 and 704 computers. Members of this class have similar backgrounds and experience. This instructor has been carefully chosen on the basis of his teaching aptitudes and actual field experience. Right now, he's using the magnetic chalkboard to illustrate a detail of circuit logic. Now, when we apply this positive potential to our base, it's very easy for electrons to flow to the positive source in the external circuit around to the emitter where they move around and, in essence, cancel the effects of our bound positive charge. This TV receiver exemplifies the progressive educational techniques in operation here. Each classroom is linked by closed circuit television. Of course, the theory learned here is supplemented by what we call hands-on experience. So if you'll come with me, we'll drop in at the laboratory for a moment. And found negative charges. The emitter sees this negative potential, therefore these electrons are repelled The lab is where we work with the actual equipment. These men are following the logic flow of one of the instructions through the 7090 system. They're using an oscilloscope, one of the tools available to us in the field. These are some of the facilities and techniques used to give customer engineers the proper training and the maintenance of IBM equipment. When our studies are completed, we return to the branch office where our presence and services assure you of maximum machine availability. Thank you, Frank, for that glimpse of customer engineering training. Most of our customers who have purchased their own equipment are who are considering purchase rather than rental know that IBM has established a similar training center in Chicago and that this center has been set up to train customer maintenance personnel so that they may service their purchased equipment in the customer's own office. Many of you have already used this Chicago center and we hope that more of you will do so in the future. Our customer engineers, working closely with our IBM sales representatives, together provide another important IBM service this is sales engineering. Specific customer problems are referred to a group of engineers with practical field experience. Their job is to adapt present equipment to special customer problems. Often these studies uncover the need for an entirely new product. One such product, developed in just this way, is the 357 data collection system, which Phil Routh will demonstrate for you now. There has long been a need for a way to close the gap between originating data and processing it. The recently announced IBM data collection system does exactly that job. Does it quickly, efficiently, and at remarkably low cost. Its applications for business and government are unlimited. The 357 data collection system consists of one or more input stations located at remote distances from the output station. 
Each input station has a card reader capable of reading IBM punch cards and of transmitting this information by cable to the output station. Along with the input card reader, there is a 12-column keyboard available by which numeric information can be keyed in for transmission to the output station. The output station consists of an IBM 024 or an IBM 026 card punch. It can combine the information sent to it by the input station and the keyboard. This single card is then ready to enter your data processing equipment as a source document. The input control unit can connect as many as 20 remote input stations to one output station. If it is necessary to determine the exact time a card was created, a readout clock is available that will supply this information. To demonstrate how these units tie together, we will take a typical application the reporting of job time. Visualize a number of input stations placed at various locations and the 026 card punch in the data processing department. As an employee starts work on a new job, he will drop his clock number card into the card reader. His clock number will be transmitted to the output punch card. The employee drops in his job number card, which he received when the job was assigned to him. This job number is also transmitted to the output card. The readout clock has simultaneously punched in the time. The card is now a true source document for the data processing system. When the employee finishes his job, he will go through the same procedure, but this time he will also transmit the quantity of the work he has completed. Naturally, quantity cannot be predetermined, so he simply sends this information to the output station by keying in the proper quantity on the 12-column keyboard. Now, at the output station, a card has been created showing the employee number, job number, quantity completed, and time completed. This card is then fed into the data processing equipment to update records. No more need to send messengers scurrying through the plant to pick up data. The time lag has been cut to a minimum by the, the new IBM 357 data collection system. This is just one of the many applications for which this machine can be used. Other applications include inventory control, Motor, motor pool accounting, maintenance of reporting, machine loading, and the list goes on and on. Wherever there is need to shrink the time between data creation and data processing, the job can be done best at lowest cost by the IBM 357 data collection system. Thank you, Phil Ralph. Modern industry is highly specialized, and now no two industries have the same data processing problem. Knowing this, IBM has in its three regional offices in New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles special industry representatives. These are specialists experienced in the problems of a specific industry, utilities, petroleum, insurance, wholesale and retail, transportation, banking. These highly trained executives are on call to analyze and help come up with recommendations that will solve your problems. In this way, as an example, we became aware of a definite need in the banking industry for a complete demand deposit system that would sell at a price substantially lower than today's operating cost. IBM's 1200 series was the answer. And now we go to Endicott, New York, to Hugh Hennig for an additional important announcement to this banking story. For every banker in the audience, a truly significant advance in banking equipment. The IBM 1401 data processing system coupled with series 1200 character sensing equipment that reads numerical data printed on paper checks and other documents in magnetic ink. Like this. The IBM series 1200 character sensing equipment consists, as you know, of the 1201 proof inscriber, which has the ability to inscribe checks in magnetic ink, 
the 1202 utility inscriber, which can create substitute documents, and the 1210 sorter reader, which reads and sorts paper checks and deposit slips of varied size and thickness, and transmits this information directly into the data processing system. Now, one of the main functions of the IBM 1210 sorter reader has been to sort checks and deposit slips digit by digit into the desired numerical sequence. However, by connecting the 1210 with the new IBM 1401, this process is eliminated. Transactions are segregated into the various pockets of the sorter reader based upon the computer's analysis of the data processing requirements of each item. This is made possible by the two-way communication between the sorter reader and 1401 data processor. The exclusive multi-channel reading method of the IBM sorter reader is combined with the problem-solving ability of the 1401. The 1401 makes all decisions on the various exceptions which normally create control problems. Right now, you are watching this new banking system in the process of balancing groups of on us items. It is actually searching for such exceptions as missing or wrong account numbers, missing or wrong ABA numbers, missing or invalid process control data. The stored program of the 1401 makes uniform decisions. It instructs the 1210 to sort these exceptions into appropriate pockets of the sorter reader. At the same time, valid items are turned over to the 1401 and new adjusted control totals are being developed. Here, a complete listing of all items is prepared at sorter reader speed up to 900 items per minute. At the same time, the 729 tape units have been recording each transaction. With all transactions on tape, the 1401 is performing the operations necessary to complete the demand deposit job, tape sorting, account posting, and statement preparation. The sorter reader may now be used independently to accomplish the sorting of paper documents to account number sequence. The high speed of the IBM 1402 furnishes the ideal solution to a common paper handling problem. It permits easy entry into the 1401 system of such small volume items as uncollected funds, special hold items, special statement requests, and changes for the vast data stored on tape. In addition, cash letter listings are prepared at speeds up to 900 items per minute. All this makes it possible to achieve the principal goal of the common machine language. You will find that the 1401 will perform many other jobs also. Installment and mortgage accounting, savings accounting, payroll, and each will be accomplished just as efficiently as the ones we have demonstrated today. Used with the series 1200 character sensing equipment, the 1401 data processing system fits the requirements of any size banking institution. For the small banks, there is the 1401 card system. Larger banks will want the faster processing provided by the 1401 tape system. And for the largest banks, the 1401 can be used with a more powerful system, such as the IBM 7070, or 705. This is truly a building block concept. The 1401 in all its various capacities can grow as your bank grows. Now, back to Mr. Jones in New York. Thank you, Mr. Hennig. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to close this telecast, it is my privilege to introduce the president of IBM, Mr. Thomas J. Watson, Jr. Thank you, Mr. Jones. This is a big day in the history of the IBM company. We have announced some really exciting new products. The announcement of new products is always a happy thing for our organization, particularly so today, since we are using this means of bringing these products simultaneously 
to the attention of most of the people in the United States who are interested in them. Thank you all for coming to the various locations throughout the country to view these new products with us. I hope that you will find them interesting as we think you will. Customers, of course, are what have built our organization. And everyone in IBM, and most particularly me, feels a great debt of gratitude to every customer, large and small, with whom we are fortunate enough to be associated. We have over 5,000 engineers working in IBM research and development today in five laboratories in our seven divisions. All of these people are working very hard to bring you better machines so, so that you will want to continue to do business with us as your need for automation increases. Not only does our research and development effort promise a great deal in the way of future machines for accounting and management purposes, but present computer techniques are making it possible for scientists to explore exciting new frontiers. As most of you know, space technology uses the electronic computer as a fundamental tool. Significantly, most of the real progress that has come about in our field and in our company has come about through customer suggestions for new devices and new machines necessary to do a better job. I want each one of you to know how much we value your loyalty to our organization how deeply we feel our responsibility for supplying the best possible machines at all times, and equally important, the best possible service. If we cannot continue to do this, we do not deserve your business. It's rare in our company that we're able to announce as many new products as we are today, and announce them with as much enthusiasm. To take you just a little bit behind the scenes in IBM, it's our policy never to announce products that are not fully tested. Until just two or three days ago, some of these products had not completed their final tests in the corporation. To the delight of each one of us, they have now passed successfully all of these tests and are ready to serve all of you in the marketplace. As we start to ship them to you, I'm sure that you'll be as pleased with them as we are, with their originality, with their reliability, and with their usefulness. Thank you again for coming today.